Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Farida Batul, who is a very, very special guest. She's an independent artist and she is an academic. She's a researcher. She's actually a doctor. So you're a doctor, Farida Batul, actually. <laughs> And she explores Pakistan's political upheavals and tumultuous history through her artwork. She received her bachelor's in fine arts from the National College of Arts, her master's in art history and theory from the College of Fine Arts at the University of New South Wales, and her PhD from my alma mater, SOAS, the School of Oriental and African Studies, and specifically from the Center of Media Studies. Uh, Farida is also involved in many art projects and community workshops for awareness building, raising, you know, for women's rights, women's education in several urban and rural centers in Pakistan, as well as conducting great political and cultural dialogue as well. She has also produced a short film for the BBC called The Clash of Masculinities. And in addition, she presents papers and presentations at international conferences around the world. She has exhibited globally at various um, important institutions and galleries within Pakistan as well as an artist. And she is a founding member and I believe one of the very strong members of the Avami Art Collective, which aims to use art in public places to generate dialogue of peaceful coexistence. And I'm very pleased that Freda is going to talk to us about all of her wonderful achievements and anything else that you guys would like to ask her. So I thought that we could start, you know, right from the beginning. I, mean, I saw a TED talk of yours actually, which I found very interesting and inspiring about Lahore, the city, and the impact that Lahore has had on your work and your practice. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about your relationship with Lahore. Did you grow up there? What was your childhood there like? How did it have such an impact on the work that you're creating? Hmm. Um, yes, I was born in Lahore and um, lived all my life in Lahore. And I consider myself uh, one of, uh, like one of the writers in India, Nayar Masood, who never left his city. And he created such marvelous work. So actually, uh, leaving Lahore for me is uh, a very traumatic experience. <laughs> I really uh, feel very comfortable here. Probably because it's what I know. Uh, mm -hmm. So if I were born in another city in the world, so probably this is how I would be feeling. Uh, but I live uh, for in different cities in the world for my education. And uh, although I like love my experience over there and I did some uh, interesting practice, but uh, Lahore for me was always in the Lahore Vekhya or Jamiyaini and Lahore Lahore, you know, in that sense. Uh, probably because I I saw Lahore in a very I was very lucky that I was born in last century. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I saw the city in a way where it it had modernity, uh, but I also had a lot of um, interesting experience of you know freely walking on roads, going by foot to school. Uh, there was no sense of fear, you know, no gated community, no barbed wires. So in that sense, um, I think because Lahore gave me all of that and my father used to make it a point to take us uh, and my cousins together, you know, on weekends to some kind of film or theater or whatever was happening in the city. So it was important that we go there. Feroz's bookshop, um, uh, all the publishers in Lahori, um, uh, in uh, Lahori Bazaar and, you know, Urdu Bazaar. So it was a summer treat that we will save money. And in the summer, we will go there and buy lots of small, small storybooks. So yeah. uh, I do remember roaming in the cities, old city, new city, parks, um, and experiencing the city in in the most marvelous way. So, that's so I think that's and how it works. That's really Sorry. lucky. So your dad would take you quite often. And as you grew older, because obviously, you know, that was your childhood. Now you're making work as an adult. How has the city filtered into your work? You know, I know that you have a lot of, and I realized later as a lot of the images I uploaded somehow, there was some like, Instagram problem, they didn't get up. But um, 
I'll put them up later for people who haven't had a chance to see Farida's work properly, so they'll get to see it. But tell me how the city filtered into your own practice in like maybe specific ways, or what aspects of your city have you tried to portray over the years? Mm. Uh, I think when uh, I started going to NCA, that was a major landmark in my life because before it was, um, I would say that I was actually clueless what I really wanted to do in really? my life. Yeah, <laughs> because I started with uh, being air hostess to journalist and social worker. And in, I, I was wow. <laughs> So I had all these interests. Uh, actually, my interest was traveling. My interest was, you know, just experiencing life, uh, what it is uh, entailing for me and what to expect. So, so I think I was a very curious person. So, um, yeah, going to NC was a fantastic experience because every uh, Friday, Saturday was devoted to a field trip. And we all first year students would gather in a bus and we would go to a spot in the city or go by, you know, uh, just walk by uh, through the Narkali old markets and just collect our old material. So I explored city in a very different way, more a much more intellectual way where uh, we started looking at history, looking at architecture culture, materials, and then I was very lucky to have friends like Masuma, uh, who we had a lot of competition in our first year drawing class, uh, like your <laughs> Falza in it, Kutsia, Raza, uh, Bani, myself. So we all were in one section in first year, and uh, there what was a lot of... Yeah. That's a great ensemble of friends. Yeah, so so everyone used to, you know, make a lot of effort to go and get the material, which is very different material uh, for our everyday assignments. So in that mm -hmm. sense, going to NCA was just in, in, in the morning to get the assignment. Then we would all leave the college. We will go to we would go to um, uh, shops, not the art shops only, but other shops in Shalmi, in Lohari, you know and to find the rarest material one can ever think of and the cheap. So we were also wow. interested in the cheap stuff, not uh, expensive. Can Kansen sheet was something which we could not dream to get every day. So so I think in that sense, NCA really gave us a public sense of experiencing art, the creativity, you know, in a very low key manner, but much more creative uh, so to get much more creative solutions. And I remember lots of lot of um, visits with uh, Masuman to Delhi Darwaza and uh, Delhi Gate and Landa Market uh, to get material which are from uh, outside Pakistan across the border or from the West used material, and then do something about it. You know, uh, make our own shirts, bags, um, whatever. So I think in that That's sense. Uh, uh, we, we all developed certain kind of relationship with the and also what you were saying about your relationship to the public, like being aware of the city, being immersed within it, traveling through the city with your friends, sorry, just drop something. Um, and that comes into your work as well, those elements of individuals, of interaction, especially when I see your Doing it again, sorry. When I see your pieces, I see a lot of public interaction um, mm. in many of them. And especially, I mean, obviously, your later works with um, the art collective, the Avami Art Collective, but even in your own personal works, many of the works, like when you when the viewer looks them at them in a certain way, they only see part of the actual artwork. When they look at it a different way, they'll see a different part of the artwork and your own social projects. So it obviously seeped into you maybe more so than you even realized at the time. Yeah, uh, because you know, for the first 10 years after my graduation, uh, I didn't do any exhibition. Uh, I mean, the solo exhibition. I mean, I, I was part of certain groups, though, but uh, it was very difficult for me to come up with, uh, with uh, an art statement, like a solo exhibition is supposed to make. So I was, 
I was indulging myself into different kind of jobs, researches, going around, doing voluntary work. And for seven years, I did so much uh, work around the city and um, outside the city and sometimes, you know, going out of the country to explore the region, the South Asian region. And I was very lucky at that time to be able to visit so many villages and small towns, craft centers, women centers in Bangladesh, India, East wow. Bengal, um, I mean, uh, 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 Sri Lanka. So, so I think I, I spent more time in understanding what is <clears throat> everything is about because NCA did equip me with a lot of um, skills and uh, talent, um, harnessing, uh, honing my talent. But I think intellectually, I still was ban uh, a little bit into um, um, confused state when I left uh, and finished my graduation. So I don't know what about the younger generation, how confident they are. And I see people are ready and taking their um, careers uh, very seriously. I was not like that. I mean, I, I was more interested in experimenting. So in that sense, I think my, uh, I, if you think that I was, uh, it, it looks like that I was not quite aware of that relationship, that's maybe it's true because for the first 10 years, I was just doing things uh, with no direction. But that's best, no? Because after, after experimenting for a very long time, that's when you hit upon, I mean, most people anyway, hit upon great ideas or they really figure out what they want to do, what they're great at. And I think it's true in college, a lot of the time we're taught skills and your real experience comes from being out in the world and working, meeting yeah. people, meeting people in different circumstances, which is why I'm sure that meeting women, especially in rural and urban settings, gave rise to so many of your later projects and later interests. I also wanted to ask you about the materiality and the mediums that you use. You spoke about that also stemming from NCA's, but like sort of bazaar hopping traditions that you and your friends did, but you've used different methods and mediums to lend themselves well to different works. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that as well, specifically perhaps. For example, like with your lenticular prints, the figures often disappear as the yeah. viewers going by. Like, was this a sort of social comment or was this something that you just enjoyed the creating for the viewer to enjoy <laughs> just like that? Yeah, uh, I think what I really enjoy in uh, making art is uh, something, it should not be very, very uh, straightforward and it's there. And I really want to have certain kind of interaction uh, with the viewer and to leave something for the viewer to interpret rather than I just give them the whole picture. Before I was in... Uh, in uh, School feeding, yeah experimenting lenticular. I did ceramics. Uh, I did the mural in college. It was my thesis project. And uh, the whole thesis was about uh, drawing and then painting over it because I didn't want people to know what I'm drawing on it. And certain areas I left, um, if you really want to see what is there, so you have to go close and see from certain angle only you have to maybe climb up the stairs, three floors, to see what um, impressions I left there. Otherwise, you only see the colors. And in that sense, I think these efforts were also going towards medium like lenticular. So lenticular just came handy uh, to answer what I was looking for. You know? mm -hmm. So I think in, in that sense, um, my quest is to not show people uh, that this is a beautiful drawing. No, uh, they have to really struggle to see uh, what exactly in that line. So, yeah. Either in the sense that it was a piece that, you know, it was completely wrong and you thought, okay, I'm not going to do this again. Or if it was a piece that really was um, a highlight for you. Is there any work like that that you think really played an important role? Um. In terms of important role, I would say one work which uh, really 
established that I'm an artist was LOC. I mean, coming, going back towards it, now looking back in history, in my past, I don't think it is really fantastic work uh, for me anymore because I've, I've seen it so many times. Uh, for me, it's boring. I mean, I think it's very interesting. Yes, but I moved on in my life and I created other works. But certainly that work was something which was uh, like people were really thinking that, oh, uh, you have done really a good piece. And I was like, really? But this is something which I'm talking about all the time. But yes, I think that was synthesis of my 10 years um, search. And then and finally I developed that. So I, I, I think a lot about LOP as very important work. But uh, what I see as very important um, see, uh, piece, in my opinion, is um, is some is a walk which I did in the city. Uh, it is Kahani Ek Shahar Ki, a story of a city which was a lenticular, seventy feet long lenticular piece in tiles, and uh, so you see, it, it has everything in my in my opinion, uh, this piece has everything which I think uh, my research, my art practice, my life, my relationship to the city. So, I mean, you can say that this is a perfect uh, merger of all my practices. It must have been quite hard for you to also balance creating art in addition to the PhD. Uh, yeah. But you see, I take a lot of time to um, for my exhibition. I mean, it's usually two or three years before I start thinking of a show. <laughs> so, and I give a lot of time to myself that uh, to work, think, develop ideas, and then I uh, go. So it's not every year, and I don't uh, think that I can uh, produce at a speed. So. Uh, so I think I did, um, art was helping me also, you know, to get out of the rigor of PhD because it was a kind of escape and it was a very pleasant um, escape space where I could uh, leave, um, live in my imagination, fantasy world or not to think about the facts and the reality. It was actually for uh, two, three months that I, I did this uh, walk because it was only on Sunday that I was free uh, oh. and uh, I would ask my uh, friend who was also my student, ex-student, but then became friend, Hassan Mushtaba, and uh, my friend and partner, Raheem. So they were my photographers. So they were available only on Sundays. And uh, okay. so I wanted a person who, who knew me, you know, uh, and uh, so I didn't want to hire a photographer, but a person who understands what I'm doing. And I also have certain kind of, you know, trust. So, so it was like, I started in January and finished in March. So, so there were so many Sundays, <laughs> but I selected different parts which uh, which were important for me in the city um, which I liked or I used to go there or I've taken those parts for some reason and I want to uh, document what was you know on the on the walls on the back of or side of me while I'm walking so it's a story uh, which is going to be shown from my angle. So I was the um, uh, the storyteller. And I wanted them to everyone to see the story from my lens. Uh, one was uh, near Walton Road. Uh, and uh, it had because uh, the wall there, uh, there were people who used to paint uh, banners and all the calligraphy which they painted on the banners, left its mark on the wall. So the wall became really red, blue, green, yellow. You know, it had so many, and it was like, like abstract painting, 
Yes, uh, it's very interesting uh, because um, uh, I, as you know, I was interested in the city and I have been doing some performances, uh, uh, political kind of work. But um, when APS happened, uh, the whole uh, state's discourse also changed towards uh, terrorism and extremism. So um, we thought this is the time to really uh, communicate with people about what is happening in, in Pakistan, you know, in terms of intolerance, in terms of extremist um, practices. So uh, I think APS was uh, the triggering factor um, in initiating initiative uh, like uh, Reclaim Sada Lahore, and that was initiated by myself, my friend and husband uh, Raheem, and another friend Raza. And uh, it was, was really talking about you know the festivals of Lahore. It was about you know the time when Lahori people used to have um, good time together in a in in public environment. And we were facing a lot of uh, difficulties when we were talking to people in the market. So every uh, week we would go out in the market, Liberty Market or parks or wherever, and uh, talk about it, have banners or uh, little painting um, stall. And uh, so there were some artists, young artists who were also seeing this work which we were doing uh, on Facebook. So they approached us and they said we are interested to form a group with you guys. Uh, so the activists and media persons and researchers, academic researchers in the in the group, they had to give in, you know, their straightforward political approach for the creative expressions. So then we formed together um, there was um, Mohsin Shafi um, there was um, Amara uh, and uh, Seher Jali and Rabia Hassan so so they were um, this is how we started it together and then within two three months it became really something which we were all excited Samra was also part of uh, it in the beginning so uh, so everyone who joined it had a very strong desire to do something different.